It's the bottom of the seventh. Two outs and the winning run is a third. The infield, which had been playing in, is now stationed deeper to cut off anything hit in holes. Swung on and the batter hits a soft chopper to short. The shortstop, wanting to make sure that he corrals this ball, stays back and waits for the charity hop. Big mistake. The batter, now turned base runner, is the fastest guy on the team. He beats the throw to first, the winning run scores, and nine sets of shoulders sag. Game over. What just happened? The fielder made a bad choice in the area of time management. With a slower runner, he might have gotten away with it. With this guy, though, there was little time to complete the play. The runner's foot speed established the clock. Had the fielder charged the ball, he would have gotten to it and made the throw much quicker, saving precious tenths of a second that would have made the difference. Any way you slice it, there are only 60 seconds to the minute, 60 minutes to the hour, and 24 hours in a day. That makes time management a zero-sum game. Now the rules of a zero-sum game state that what is added in one place must be taken from another. Simply put, you can't add five minutes to an activity without subtracting it from another activity. In the case of our hapless shortstop, the time he added to fielding the ball was time he subtracted from completing the throw. Tick, 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 tick. The same principle holds true in business, especially in this industry. That's because you have to wear so many hats to sell real estate. You have to find the time to do your marketing and advertising, time to create any materials you might use, time to meet with service providers, time to do cold calling and knock on doors, time to stay in touch with your past clients and sphere of influence, time to address the mountain of paperwork each deal generates, time for appointments with contractors, inspectors, title people, lenders and the like, time to keep up with training and certification, time to travel from one location to another. And that isn't taking into consideration the time you must devote to such things as eating, sleeping, exercising, caring for the needs of your family, and maybe a bit of R&R &R from time to time. Tick, 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 tick. It all adds up. I'm sure you'll agree that how you divvy up your time is of primary importance. In that regard, I'd like to make a couple of points. Point number one is that you must prioritize matters concerning your health, your faith, and your family. You must be at your best to give the best to your customers. That all begins with paying attention to the things in your life that should matter the most. A few years ago, I was walking the fields at my ballpark one evening when I was approached by a coach. He said, Bob, what the heck are you doing here every night? This program runs itself. I responded by saying, thank you. Well, he was puzzled. I continued, if it appears that this program runs itself, I must be doing a great job, because it certainly doesn't. This gentleman didn't understand the importance of my little walks around the park each evening. That's when I connect with the people. That's when I make observations as to what's working and what must change. Most importantly, that's how I impart my character and value system to the program. Point number two, then is that time spent with people is not time wasted, it's time invested. My final point, and folks, please forgive me for saying this, is that we must be conscious of the rising tide of public rudeness brought about by the proliferation of mobile digital devices. The next time you're in a meeting room, a conference hall, or a classroom, count how many people have their chins on their chests. No, they're not sleeping, they're fidgeting with an iPad or smartphone. Why? Quite simply, they've arbitrarily made the choice that the discourse within the room is less important than their email, social media, baseball score, solitaire, you name it. Folks, the conversation may not be stimulating, but common courtesy demands that you at least give the appearance of paying attention. Don't allow yourself to be detached in this fashion. I make that point here because meaningful interaction with people requires your full and sincere attention. These digital devices are wonderful resources, but they don't belong in such settings. Now imagine taking your spouse or your sweetheart to a fine restaurant, only to see him or her open a novel and become detached. Are you getting the picture? A major aspect of your time management, then, must be to budget time for the appropriate use of these devices and to develop the discipline 
to avoid them when their use is inappropriate. In the zero-sum game, you don't want digital fidgeting to replace meaningful interaction. There's so much more that I could say, but I just don't have the time. See you next time from the dugout.